extraordinary pleasure and honor to be able to present this project. Um, I prepared um, a description of the thinking that went into it and I will read two statements that were sent to us by the representatives of two core organizations. The Unicode Consortium has been mentioned several times. It's an international <coughs> <coughs> There's an inter international platform where businesses that compete with each other agree to the rules. This is why the World Wide Web works. But on the other hand, there is a representative from the World Wide Web Consortium. That is the agreement to build the network in the first place. So we have a network and we have a protocol to exchange information. That's the opening page that every viewer will find when he searches the web for Moscow Post Hub. Plus many keywords that we're providing so that people certainly will be able to find it. Now, we wanted to make this Post Hub a reflection of Oman. So we looked at Oman with its architecture. We looked at it with its dress code. We looked at it with its handicrafts and, of course, the nature. I know you're all familiar with these images, but I'm reminding you of the beauty of the country that you happen to be living in. And we have the beauty of the nature. And all of this condensed, summarized into a color pattern. So the colors of the Moshav are actually a reflection of the whole reality that you live in. The neutral colors, the bright colors, the medium colors and the dark colors. On top of that, from the flowers we abstracted the shapes. And from the cityscapes we abstracted the architecture. And then from the great tradition of text production in Islam as a civilization, we extracted the proportions for the page. Mm -hmm. And here, here you see how gradually the concept ma materializes, the early efforts. Then our Lebanese designer got the brilliant idea to honor the Omani nation with this Usturlab, a simple but brilliant idea. But then the Fatiha, built on, again, the magnificent proportions, which I think are also leading for everything that's being done in book production in any language, the page imposition. <laughs> it grows into what it becomes, and you can even see that the flowers went, that went into it <coughs> remind one of the Abru of the Persian and the Ottoman culture. But in the text there are markers that we also were able to extract from our observations of Oman. So the Hizb and Sajda markers are actually created on these uh, images, on these shapes. The four, these four shapes are actually Unicode characters and you can search them, you can copy them, but if you copy them in another environment the shape will evaporate because the shape is part of the Omani Mosaf. Then the script. The script is based on uh, the, the, the texts, the ayahs, are all written with a computer model of the average five centuries of Ottoman text production. And one of the remarkable features of Ottoman text production is what we call dynamic shape variation. And I'll give you one example. There is here the hand of Hafiz Osman Qayish Zizade. This is Qayish Zizade is an Ottoman calligrapher who spent his life copying the Quran, 120 Masaf. This is by the same man on a slightly narrower page, narrower page so he has less space, space for the same text, the same number of lines with the same content. And he changes the shapes of the words so that the text becomes narrower. Now that observation we turned into an algorithm. So now I look at this word which in modern, simplified 
Arabic. Actually, this is Arabic seen through European eyes. It's functional, but it's dead. The real Arabic has many ways of shaping the same word. There is an element of length that you can add, and there are other aspects. All of this is part of the Omani Quran. If I add an element of length in the red, dead image, there is just a flat stripe. If you add an element of length in live, real Ottoman Islamic script, it becomes a new pattern. And I'm going quickly to walk through the various patterns that, that occur when you add elongations between the connected letters. There was a question, what is the business case? Gentlemen, there is no business case. This is just a matter of beauty. This is civilization, reflected in just the shaping of one word. Um, I, so I continue. This, this word generates literally thousands of possible solutions. And one of the challenges we had is to find a manageable system to allow any user in the world to discover this dimension, this unknown dimension of Arabic script. More images, we are still looking at one word. Now, the headlines. For the headlines, we decided to take one of the most delicate and beautiful preserved manuscripts that was discovered in the roof of the Sana'a Grand Mosque when it was damaged by an earthquake in 65. It was used as insulation against the heat of the sun. It dropped on top of the workers, it was captured and recorded and documented and that enables me to use it to make a model of the headlines. So a little history behind the script. I'm giving here an example of the the power of Islamic script. In the red image you see how Europeans or Westerners see Arabic script dead and functional. Without the dots you can't even see what the difference between all these shapes is. But the original writings in Arabic did not have dots and worked out a very intelligent and fascinating little system to dissimulate what's, what should be, uh, what, is, what appears to be similar. I'm using a simple uh, transliteration with the letter B to indicate that you're looking at a scene and three bear-like letters. They could be known. There's no specific meaning, it's just to show you the pattern. When the letter B is repeated many times, they start to become different. When a noon is added, the bees take on a different pattern. You can find this in all the manuscripts. It's not just one of manuscripts. This is for centuries. This was a system. And we tried to get this into the Mashaf, Mashaf. And the result is a system of headlines, light against blue, in combination with this Ottoman computer model, reconstruction of the average Ottoman Mashaf. And we are proud that this reflects the way <coughs> Islam has been creating text over the centuries. In, in a nutshell, the Mashaf Maskat represents uh, a, a tribute to Islam from a point of view of Arabic philology and linguistics, from Arabic orthography analysis, from text encoding expertise, historic script rule analysis, that's what I just showed to you, software design, type design and web design, book design and ornamentation. And all of this together leads to technological innovation. We have now a technology that could be used for any language because it liberates the script from the clutches of a small number of commercial enterprises. Now I, I'm adding the opinions of the two representatives that were willing to make a statement but not able to do this on, on view. Could, could you continue uh, showing my screen, please? This is Richard Ishida. He represents the World Wide Web Consortium and I read it on, in his name. The new electronic Mosaf Moskat is very attractive both aesthetically through its use of colors and symbols associated with the Sultanate of Oman and typographically through its approach to working with the highly complicated orthography and elaborate script rules of Arabic. Not only is the quality of the typography very high, as you'd expect, but you, the use of Unicode and web technologies provides the user with useful features. The text looks as intended wherever you are, no need for you to obtain special fonts or download special Arabic software. 
But you can also use interactive controls to tweak the typographic features used for a NASC script, adapting swashes, coloring or rotating diacritics, switching between different styles of pointing for headings, selecting alternative ligatures, etc. And the page reflows to accommodate the changes. All you need is a browser. And because of it, it uses web technologies, it's easy to select runs of text, copy them to the clipboard, search the text and export PDF or XML. You can even share those changes with others. Another nice touch is the eye-catching Astrolabe inspired interface for navigating to the right place in the text, which is meant to reflect the seagoing traditions of the Omani people. An impressive blend of aesthetics and functionality which by harnessing the power of web standards, allows access to the rich typographic traditions of the Arabic script. That's one opinion, and I, I'm very proud to be able to read it. And this is Mark Davies, Unicode president and co-founder. He sent this message. With its rich and varied history as a maritime nation, Oman stands at the crossroads of East and West, from my last visit, I remember well the particularly gracious hospitality of your people and was impressed both by your openness and by your determination to enhance the educational opportunities and expand the technological capabilities of your nation. While not a speaker of Arabic myself, I do have a personal connection. I was the developer of the first Arabic Macintosh from Apple. This is in 1986. The first mass-produced personal computer for the Arabic language. That experience gave me a lasting appreciation for the beauty of the Arabic script. To this day, I have two lovely samples of Arabic calligraphy on the walls of my home, dating back to when I was working on the Arabic Macintosh. Unfortunately, I could not be with you today, nor, due to an injury, could Lisa Moore, the Vice President of the Unicode Consortium and Chair of the Unicode Technical Committee, and by the way, I was rep representing the Omani Ministry in this Unicode Technical Committee for a couple of years. For this, we are both very sorry. So, what is Unicode? At its core, the goal of the Unicode Consortium is to provide the characters of the world's languages on computers, be they Macs, PCs, phones or tablets. In fact, any digital device. It thus enables written communication across distance and time. The ability of people to communicate around the world, no matter what language they speak, the ability to preserve linguistic heritage, which is vital to people's understanding of themselves, their past, their future. Most of the membership are major technology companies, including Adobe, Apple, Facebook, Google, Huawei, IBM, Microsoft, Netflix, Oracle, SAP and Symantec. The government of Oman is one of, the, of a small number of governments that are members of the Unicode Consortium and the Consortium is very grateful to Oman for its extraordinary support and commitment to the Unicode project. My congratulations today on the launch of the electronic Mushaf, Muscat Mushaf, which will stand as a digital testament for people worldwide. The Minister of Endowments and Religious Affairs, His Excellency Sheikh Abdullah bin Mohammed al Salimi, has succeeded in reconciling two different aspects of world culture. The icon of Islamic civilization with state-of-the-art technology. Without compromising the text in any way, the Quran is now beautifully, beautifully represented in digital form using Unicode characters. With this technology, everyone can view and search the text anywhere in the world and with any device. Most importantly, thanks to the effective use of Unicode, the website displays the Quran identically on all devices, browsers and operating systems. Users need not download or install new fonts to have the text at their fingertips. Yet these are not mere pictures of Arabic text. It is composed of actual Arabic Unicode characters that can be copied, indexed, searched and dynamically reformatted, making the Muscat Quran a powerful tool for Islamic students and scholars and allowing people around the world to interactively explore the variety and flexibility of Arabic typography. The layout and the graphic design of the Mus'haf Muscat is a colorful homage, colorful homage to the Sultanate of Oman. The flowers, the landscapes, the townscapes, in addition to the numbered bars that indicate the 30 sections, the navigation via the motive of the astrolabe, it's a special tribute to Oman as the maritime phase of the Arab culture. With this launch, 
The Omani ministry has thus raised web publishing of Arabic texts to a new level. While it may appeal primarily to Muslims and scholars, its interactivity invites the entire world to appreciate the beauty of Arabic script. The unique word shaping interface enriches the digital world with an aspect of Islamic culture that has never before been made so visible and accessible. It opens new perspectives, not just for the Quran, but also for modern Arabic and potentially for other languages and scripts that are covered by Unicode. Thank you for allowing me these few minutes to express my thoughts and my congratulations again on the launch of the electronic Muscat Quran. This was Mark Davis on behalf of the Unicorn Consortium. And this concludes my little speech.